This is awesome. In touch with Jesse, our local mushroom guy. I'm on my way back from town, running some errands before our fishing trip. And just came across a pile of slippery jacks, folks. This is beautiful. All along this little bridge. Amazing. I'm super stoked about this find. Fisherman. I'm on a loaner phone. My phone kicked the bucket. There we go. That's a little lens. I can let them get bigger, but I won't be back out this way for a while. This looks like another Anamita right here. So, Jesse was saying that, uh, yeah, these ones can be like a hallucinogen. I'm gonna put those in a separate bag. Those will be for the zombies. This is incredible. I found that new mushroom guy too. 60 degrees foraging and I posted that to my community page folks so that's somebody you might want to queue into if you're interested in mushrooming bring stuff and you can do like a google search even and find a local mushroomer group or an individual that will know their stuff in the area I'm pretty excited about this. And yeah, my fingernails are a little dirty from harvesting in the garden. Holy smokes, everything all at once. I need a break to go fishing. So this is growing. These are all growing right next to a jack pine stand. I actually have a geocache hidden in here. Somewhere in here anyways. And we got juniper bushes all right here in the foreground. Just very gently place them in there. Common hair cap moss, lichen in here, pine needles. That one's past you. Little pixie cup lichen. So very exciting. And I can't wait to go for more lobster mushrooms. I'm going on a fishing trip. Oh, there's a slug. Yeah, the slugs like to hang out in there. Right next to a little tiny white pine. White pine's also for some good medicine. Yeah, full-on garden harvest and canning time. 
Amazing. Slippery Jacks, baby. Mushroom books, too. If you can't find your local people. Look at that. Have a couple sources of information. I'm really thankful that I found Jesse. Just by doing a simple Google search, I found a Facebook mushroom group. And then I sent him a, a personal friend request, so. Awesome. Keep hearing something back in there. A little creepy. And I'm right down a back road that I always take to come back home. Now if I can only find some black trumpets, some hedgehogs would be friggin' awesome. And then I'd be adding to the knowledge local mushrooms. This one is pretty much done. I'm so happy for this harvest and thankful. This one, the worms got to it, so I'm just going to leave this one behind here. mushrooms this year, I probably could compare it to making up for the lack of some of the certain things in my garden, to be honest. And we eat a lot of mushrooms, so I'm getting very happy. I just got a notification for the Needy Homesteader too, that's another great channel. A couple more to go. And this moss is amazing. I should actually have my sandals off and be standing and picking in this beautiful, gorgeous moss. Therapy for your soul and your body to connect. That one's a little bit too much. Too far gone. Another little guy. It's beautiful. So while we're out here, I might as well pick up some trash. There's 10 cents. There we go. Nice, beautiful harvest. We're coming back to the Amanita. We're going to put it in a separate bag. Amanita muscaria. Okay, kids, I'll be right in. Get off the, get off the screen. Mommy's home. Get down. Get down, Peanut. And on the way home, I also found one more giant puffball. So we have the two puffballs. I'm going to open up both of them, and um, we can see if they are viable or not. Incredible. Largest puffball I've ever found. This is the first one that I found. Yellowy and quite mushy, it's not firm anymore, so I will not be eating this. So, all I'm going to do is I have puffballs that grow over here in our little house cap orchard, so I'm just going to leave it so that the spores can join the rest of the spores. Now, let's check this one out. This one is beautiful so far on the edge. I just wanted to slice it up so that I could dehydrate it. 
And here we are, right to the middle of the mushroom. And it is beautiful, it's firm, and it's just right. So, great score. I love it. Largest puffballs that I have found. It's incredible. I used to pick them at a place that I grew up in and they totally just ruined the whole site with a load of gravel. So I'm happy to find some new locations for puffballs. Thank you for watching folks. Do your mushroom research and try to connect with your local mushroom people. So now we're just gonna clean off our slippery jacks. All I'm doing is I'm cutting off the ends and rinsing them off with water and you can see that they're super they're slippery kind of just like fish to be honest beautiful amazing got a lot to go and then all i'm going to do is i'm going to blanch them just so that they Jacks for a reason, folks. Slippery little things. That looks so cute. No, oh, like right in here. We're just trying to cool them off. Just did like a eight to ten minute blanching. Slippery jack. Slippery jack. I'm gonna. Yeah, they're super slick. They didn't like the blanching as much as the lobster mushrooms. So maybe that's why Justin said there's no need to blanch on that. You just probably cook them up, right? Just trying to get them cooled off and then I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dehydrate them. I'm thinking. I don't wanna be running a pressure canner tonight. To be honest. I'm happy with this harvest though. So yes, the mushrooms will shrink down when you do blanch them. And I do have a new colander that I bought because look at this one's ripped. Crap. Bought that from Avon. Our Avon lady. Northern girl Avon. Beautiful harvest. They resemble fillets of fish. They're slippery like fillets. They look like fillets. That one resembles a button mushroom. This is beautiful. Thank you, Jesse, for being my mushroom teacher guy. Okay, so I'm learning. So we blanch these and then some of them turn to like super mush. Okay, so I know mushrooms do not like water. And the lobster mushrooms loved being blanched and then they put them right into the pressure canner like right from the um, hot water into jars and then went into the pressure canner and they were absolutely fantastic these ones the plans were just to blanch them dry them out and dehydrate them but some of them turned super mushy so i need some help here folks any mushroom experts? Is it just because the mushrooms, when they're larger, they do not want the water? Because these were fine, beautiful specimens and I probably went and screwed it up. Hopefully not. But we're learning, right? This is all part of the learning process here. Okay, so we got a few layers of the mushrooms on the dehydrator. These are the slippery jacks. Looking pretty good. And then we got the pop balls over here in with my dill because we're running out of room in this like, dehydrator. We got the pugs making pigs of themselves over there. 
And so this is the, the caps of the Slippery Jacks. Kind of messy, larger ones, obviously. We're gonna see how these turn out in the dehydrator though. And then we're gonna have like a little meal. Make sure we're not gonna die. Right. No, I, I have faith. I have faith. My friend Jess. Being shot off the head, eh? Yeah. 